we're going to need a MIDI cable for this one. All we need to do is plug the MIDI output right back into the MIDI input. I'll be starting out with default project settings. There's no special MIDI setup required. I'll be using this sample from Lego Welt for the first example. Okay, going to adjust this playback a bit, get something a little different going on. This isn't meant to be a standard production session, so let's skip ahead. So I've got this happy little pattern here now, and I'm going to set up a flex machine on this third track, tweaking the playback setup a bit so it's a little more fun. Now into setting up the record buffer, and I'm going to set the internal recording source to track two, and turning down that record length. Now I'm going to set the default sample of this track to be its record buffer, now let's go into the MIDI side. I'm going to use track 3 just to keep things consistent. Need to set it to channel 3 since that's the default MIDI channel for audio channel 3. And now I'm going to change the default note to D sharp 4, which is the internal recording source sampling trigger. So if I put a trig down on this track, we can now see that the recording buffer is being engaged. So this is exactly the same right now as using a regular recording trig. Not getting anything here right now because of the way I've set up the playback machine. So I'm going to need to adjust the length parameter. So this is pretty fun with uh, the relatively complex source I'm recording. But let's make it a little fancier. Since our recording trig is a MIDI trig, we can now put trig conditions on it. And now I'm going to change the scaling around so that the recording trig activates at different parts of the source audio sequence. Since this is a pretty quick and dirty way of doing resampling, you can hear that there's a good amount of clicks produced fairly often. Now let's layer this with the source audio. I want some reverb on that sample playback track. Let's try an octave down instead of an octave up. Let's solo the resample track. Okay, I'm going to set up another conditional recording channel. Doing the same things as before, just this one is going to be using MIDI channel 4 since I'm going to control the record buffer on audio track 4. Putting a conditional trick down. We already have the recording being activated. I'm going to adjust the recording setup a little bit. This is going to resample the first resampling track. I'm 
maybe some ping pong, and I'll turn that time stretch off. Set it to the record buffer. Mm, not getting much yet. Take a look at that. Have to adjust a little bit of something. This kind of resampling chain gets a little interesting. Try switching things up a little here. Time to delete some trigs for some breathing room. Maybe time to mess with the source a bit. Maybe a little bit of crunchiness. Let's work with something more percussive now. I've been pretty entertained lately by the stock loops on the Octatrack. Going to set up the MIDI recording trigger track first this time. Time to set up this playback machine a little. Set it to the recording buffer. Oops, looks like I forgot something. Time to go into the recording setup menu. It might just want to know what internal source we want to record from. And I certainly don't need a ton of audio. There aren't any conditions on the recording trigger yet, so this is basically the same as using a regular record trig. However, it does have some extra jitter and latency. This is pretty boring since it's just grabbing the same part of the loop every time. And there aren't any effects or modulation to change it up between recordings. So I'm going to change the scale relationships of the tracks to grab different parts of the loop. And I'm going to put a condition on this recording trigger now. Oops, that's a little bit low on the probability. There we go. Time to add in some more tricks. Let's take a look at that recording buffer. for some modulation and effects on the source audio track. Try a little pitch modulation. Now 
and a little bit of filter movement. Since I'm messing with the pitch, I'm going to turn the time stretch on. And let's put on the ping pong loop for some reversing action. I'm going to unmute the source. Okay, brace yourself. Ba bass line pumping, crowd is jumping, beats is thumping. Oh, that that was that was pretty rough. Okay, let's see if we can can do anything with that. Since I started experimenting with MIDI loopback on the Octatrack, I've found conditional recording triggers to be one of the more useful and relatively problem-free techniques to exploit. The other one I'd like to cover in this video is the use of the arpeggiator to control the audio tracks. C5 represents a down one octave value. Be careful about what MIDI notes you spit back into the octatrack. You may notice things just went a little haywire with where my active track is. <laughs> C6 plays back the sample at the original pitch. So now I'm going to set it up for using the arpeggiator. Going to make the note hold infinitely. Just going to randomly pick an arpeggiator mode. Time to spice this arp sequence up a little bit. And now the real fun really happens when we go back to the audio track and start messing with the modulation there. Since we have a nice vocal loop here, we're going to mess with the start point. Okay, set that to the start. I'm going to switch it to hold behavior so it doesn't change values mid trig I'll adjust that end point a bit. This sample's pretty irritating. Time to switch it up. This one's kind of fun. Yo, 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 yo,
I'll try making the ARP a little fancier. Trying to mess with the modulation a bit. Maybe adjust the envelope a bit. Try speeding up the ARP a bit. Time to adjust the ARP mode. I think I have to put some delay on this. Now you can combine the triggers on the audio track with the external MIDI coming in. But be a little careful about what's going on, because if you'll notice what's happening with the pitch right now on these triggers, if you're not paying attention, you might get a bit confused. This does offer an interesting way of programming patterns into the audio tracks sequencers. Let's combine the arpeggiation with the conditional recording technique. Track 2 is recording from track 3. Let's look at the source audio file. Might as well trim the end a little. I'm going to put a square wave on the rate, flip between forward and reverse playback. Since I'm modulating the rate, I'm going to set that to zero. So I'll solo the drum track for transient spaces. Just heavily filtered, distorted, compressed uh, drum loop. Cut up a bit. Modulated. Let's listen to some scenes. And now for the other audio stream. Just noise going into a comb filter. 
Let's take a look at some of these P locks. And on this neighbor track, I'm modulating the filter. So here's the non conditionally resampled audio together. And here's some of the effects the scenes have on the comb filter track. Okay, let's take a look at the first resampling channel. This one takes from the Q bus. An important part of this resampling approach is how performance gestures like using the crossfader can interact with the resampling channels. The second resampling channel samples exclusively from the comb filter sound. With the highly dynamic signals in this track, it was a little challenging um, to avoid getting a lot of clipping in the resampling channels. Nothing fancy in the recording setup. Let's try changing up the cue busing. Using the cue bus gives a lot of flexibility, and it's fun to record tracks before they go through neighbor machines. solo the sounds in the second pattern. Only a tiny portion of the noise sample goes into the comb filter, just to excite it. 